Like everything else on saxophone, playing in the altissimo range is really hard until one day it's not so hard. In today's video, I'm gonna show you all of my fingerings from high F sharp up until high C in the altissimo range for alto saxophone and tenor saxophone. But more importantly, I'm gonna show you the things that I practice every day that allow me to get these notes out when I need them. Everyone's always asking for altissimo fingerings, but the truth is it's not the fingerings that you need, it's the preparatory work, the sound work, the long tones, the overtone exercises, those are the things that are gonna get the altissimo notes to come out for you consistently in tune and with a good sound. At the end of this video, I got a link for you to download all of my altissimo fingerings on alto and tenor saxophone. It's also in the description below. But please watch what I'm about to show you now. If you think that just putting your fingers in the right spot is gonna get these notes out for you, you're wrong. Most altissimo notes have several different possible fingerings. Why is that? It's because the fingerings don't really matter so much. It's what you're doing here and what you're doing here and what's going on up here that's gonna help you get those notes out. Also important to note, you don't need some special mouthpiece to play altissimo notes. With a well-balanced reed, I can get all of my altissimo notes out on any of my mouthpieces and they're all different. Metal, hard rubber, large chamber, small chamber, baffle, no baffle, it doesn't matter. So before we get into the fingerings, check out these warm-ups that I'm doing every day. And you need to understand that if you don't put in the preparatory warm-up work on a very regular basis, you're not gonna have success in the altissimo range. Doesn't matter what fingerings you've got. So, big surprise, I start off all my practice sessions with long tones, and I play long tones over the entire range of my saxophone. So I like to start in the middle, like middle C, play a long tone on every note, all the way down chromatically to low B flat, and then go back to the middle and do the same thing all the way up to my highest altissimo note until I don't have any more notes. Once I'm done with that, I take my mouthpiece off and I practice with just the mouthpiece on its own. And I just do some simple, I play a major scale, uh, some arpeggios. Really just, I'm on that for about a minute or so. Then I put my mouthpiece back and I get into playing my overtones. Overtones are when you finger one note, like low B flat on your saxophone, and you're able to play several different notes with the same fingering. If you don't yet know what overtones are, then you really shouldn't be working on your altissimo yet. So I play my overtones over, the, over about three octaves on low B flat, low B, C, sometimes I go up to C sharp and D. Uh, I play a couple exercises, uh, a couple melodies just with overtones. Again, I'm only spending a few minutes, but the, the thing is I'm doing it every day. You don't need to spend half an hour on this every day. You just spend a, sh a few minutes. But if you do it every single day, over time, you're really gonna reap the benefits. And that's it. Long tones, mouthpiece all by itself, and overtone work. If I don't do that warm up, I'm gonna get into all sorts of bad habits where I'm trying to force notes out with my embouchure by squeezing really hard. Uh, my throat is gonna be closing off. I'm gonna be dropping my jaw to get the low notes out. All of those things are, are kinda typical bad habits and ways we kinda cheat to try to get the, the extreme registers out. You want your air to be doing the work, not your mouth, not your jaw, not your lips. Your airstream does all the work. While you're working on all these sound exercises, you wanna pay careful attention to the shape of your throat. You want it to be open and relaxed, and also the position of your tongue. You don't want your tongue to be closing off your throat. So try to get it to relax and lay down flat in your mouth. Okay, so now let's get into the fingerings. If you haven't already watched my video on how to get into the altissimo range in the beginning, I suggest you go watch that one now and come back to this. It's important that we start out by using our front E, front F, front F sharp fingerings first, and then we'll be ready to 
slide on into G. If you've got other altissimo fingerings that work for you for any of these notes, please put them in the comments below so everyone else can try them out and see if they work for them. We're gonna start with the note E. Your high E, your front E. So you press this key, we call this the front F key, and then press two and three down in your left hand. All these are with the octave key. Next up, front F, front F key, and number two finger. Now we get into our first altissimo note, F sharp on the alto saxophone. You leave your F natural down, add your bottom side key, your B flat side key, that gives you F sharp. Then to get to G, we put our first finger down in the right hand and lift up the middle finger here. So now it's just front F, first finger, right hand, B flat side key. F sharp, this one is different. I do different on tenor than on alto. On alto, I just add the, the side B flat key. This works on some tenors, but on tenor, I add that side key, lift up my second finger here, and put down my first finger in the right hand. So F sharp on tenor for me is front F key, first finger right hand, side B flat. And to get to G from here, it's just, I lift up the first finger. So G is the front F key plus the B flat side key. G sharp is one, three, one, plus the side C key, the middle side key over here. I also sometimes use the one that I use on tenor, which is two, three, and middle finger in your right hand, F sharp key. It's not as reliable for me on alto as it is on tenor. A, I use the same as on tenor. Two, three, one, two, three. B flat, same on both saxophones, is third finger, middle side key in your right hand, one, two, three. To get to B natural, I add the D palm key and I lift up two and three over here. So it's three, one, middle side key, D palm key. And for high C, same on both alto and center, one, three, one, three, E flat pinky key. These are my fingerings that I use. They work on my Yonagasawa saxophones. They also work on my Mark VI. If you are using a different fingering or you find a, a different fingering that you prefer, by all means, use that one. You gotta have to find a compromise sometimes as well. You want a good sound and you want the note to be in tune, but you also want something that's relatively easy to get to from other notes. Maybe you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of intonation for a certain fingering in order to get the, the notes to come out easier so you can play something a bit faster. If you wanna really take it to the next level, if you wanna have a beautiful sound, if you want people to really take notice when you play to your sound, this, this is absolutely necessary. And if you wanna play altissimo notes, you must be practicing the overtones. Sorry, it's just the way it is. So in the beginning, just practice the first couple overtones. Go octave, octave and a fifth, and second octave. That's it, that's all you need. You don't need to try to do more. And that in itself is pretty challenging in the beginning. Remember, you want to be doing all of this with the least amount of effort possible. You can't be forcing the notes. You can't be squeezing the hell out of your mouthpiece and reed to force those notes out. That's not how it works. Let the air do the work and let your throat find the notes you're looking for. All of this work with the overtones carries over to when you're playing altissimo. The natural tendency is gonna be to want to bite, but that's going to close off the reed. It's gonna stop the reed from vibrating and you're gonna get some horrible sound instead of the note you're looking for. Another thing to keep in mind is that once you start getting these altissimo notes coming out in the practice room, like 99% of the time, when you then go and try to use those notes in a performance for the first few times, they probably aren't gonna be coming out. You gotta miss like 100 altissimo notes before they start coming out on stage when you want them. 
That's it. All the altissimo fingerings for alto and tenor saxophone. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and click the like button. If you're not already subscribed, now's a great time to get yourself subscribed. The PDF can be downloaded. Follow the link that's in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.